Dr. Sharma, welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Matt, for having me here today. It's a pleasure and an honor to be with you today here on this platform. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Sharma, um, since the pandemic has hit, uh, I've seen some excellent education coming out of India. Um, I'm always, always seeing on my Facebook feed the AIOS seminars coming up. Can you tell me a little bit about how education uh, has been impacted by the pandemic, but perhaps even some positive aspects of that? So I think ever since the pandemic came, it became a it became difficult for all of us. So at the level of the All India Ophthalmological Society, the first thing that we did was that we got out the guidelines for our members, which was also a part of the uh, educational program because uh, they didn't know what to do during the lockdown and they didn't know what to do post lockdown. So a series and uh, series of webinars were, you know, held, uh, which included uh, almost everything, which included the pulmonologist to tell them about their own health as to how, what preventive measures they should take during the uh, COVID times. It included the fellow ophthalmologists as to how they are coping with it. It included the stress-related webinars because people were quite stressed out. So how did they come out of it? Then apart from this, it, it we also came out with a very robust guidelines, which is almost a 200-page document. And this all happened on virtual platforms. So we involved all the individual subspeciality societies, like the Konya Society of India, the Vitro Retina Society of India, the IRSI, uh, the Uveitis Society, the Oculoplasty Society. So all the societies from India were involved, as well as the... Uh, representatives from Ministry of Health and Family Welfare were involved in that. And we got out these guidelines after uh, after it was endorsed by everybody. And that is there on the website. And this we did it in a record time of almost 15 to 20 days. Well, that all sounds fantastic that you've not only survived but thrived since, since what's happened as an ophthalmic community. Um, as we look forward into 2021, uh, what could we expect from the next AIOS in terms of the meeting there? So as far as the meeting is concerned, uh, we had, you know, we were the last to have the meeting before the COVID uh, era. That was in February uh, 2020. And that we just scraped through because immediately after that, the lockdown was announced and we couldn't hold any more physical meetings. So the future meeting that we plan to hold is in June 2021. And it's going to be on the hybrid platform. So uh, some halls are going to be physical and some halls are going to be virtual. We realize that the people from overseas are not, uh, not may not be able to travel to India like it happens year after year. And Matt, we've had the pleasure of having you also at several of our conferences uh, physically. But we are going to have those speakers online and are going to have their topics online. And uh, the rest of the people who can attend physically will attend physically. So uh, tentatively, it is planned in the last week of June 2021. How would you say the, the ophthalmic community and marketplace will fare in, in India this upcoming year? Are certain segments of Indian ophthalmology still affected? Are there other segments that are less affected? Describe to us what's happening on the ground there. You see, uh, we are, there has been a resurgence back to action uh, after the lockdown was over and people have realized that lives have to move on, livelihood has to you know, move on. So uh, people are back into action. The practices have picked up quite a bit here. Uh, the like, the emergency, apart from the emergency procedures that we did, we are now also doing elective procedures with due precautions. Uh, as far as the industry is concerned, I think the pharmaceuticals have picked up quite well, and so also have the sur surgical uh, you know, industry, especially the industry which dealt with the consumables, like you know, intraocular lenses, or for that matter, even refractive surgery, I think is almost back to normal, almost to the tune of 90 to 100 percent 
what has hmm. been majorly hit is the i banking i banking has been really hit uh, majorly as per the i bank association of india statistics we are down by almost 80% as opposed to what we were last year that's very good to know it it seemed like overall um you know the, the indian marketplace was hit very hard but i wonder if there's also an opportunity for a major resurgence um very large country a very active ophthalmic marketplace there what do you think are the prospects in the next year to to 5 years um do you think that things will come back strongly than perhaps even other regions of the world i do think that they are going to come back i mean where are the patients going to go they are not going to go anywhere and if they are not coming now they are going to come back later and hmm. most of the procedures you know in ophthalmology are elective they are not emergencies you know, which uh, which if they are not dealt with now and the patients don't come back now they will not happen again so i do feel that uh, uh, it is picking up slowly and i'm quite sure that we are out of this pandemic they might in fact be a rebound phenomena where there might be a you know boom also well dr sharma thank you so much for joining us and elucidating uh th- these variety of topics we appreciate uh, your guidance on these issues and look forward to seeing you in india again once this is uh, all over thank you mark we look forward to having you physically here uh for our next conference and for all other all our conferences uh, and thank you always for your support and for your presence it's always a pleasure to talk to you to see you and to interact with you thank you so much best wishes today from vietnam